Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm a mixed media artist and in today's video I'm going to be finishing my sketchbook. I have been working in the sketchbook since around the end of March 2023, so it's been a long time coming with this one, mostly filled from my 100 day daily art challenge and then a little bit slower towards the end of the year. But I'm really excited to finish this one, it's always a really lovely feeling when you do finish a sketchbook. So I thought it would be fun to film it, to fill these two spreads and take you along with me. I recently went to Prague so I'm planning on filling these with photos that I took from my trip and using a very wintry colour palette which is a little bit different for me. I really hope you enjoy watching this one and let's get drawing. So I'm not going to be voicing over this whole video but I am going to talk a little bit about my process and the tools that I'm using for the first spread. Then I'll go on to some music and come back in for the second spread just to talk through because I do use different materials for both of them. So I realised I didn't talk about the actual sketchbook I'm using. So this is the Royal Talons 13 by 21 centimetre sketchbook. If you've been on my channel before you'll know that this is my favourite sketchbook. It's my daily driver. I used it for the 100 day challenge which is what fills most of this one. And it just feels like a really low pressure sketchbook. Definitely the one I reach for the most and really enjoy filling. So like I said I am using some photos from Prague to draw from and I also am using my acrylic markers as like the base block colours. I'm using this beige one as like the base for the buildings and then for the night sky I'll use the slate grey. You can see that coming in here, it's definitely much more of a blue than it is a slate grey. But it just worked really well for the night sky and I really like using these as the base because it just gives me something to work on top of. I don't sketch so it gives me that base to then work on top with my details and my line work. But it just means that I have something to work with even if they are just very simple shapes. I'm not too worried about the texture that it gives, in fact I think that just works and adds to my piece. So I'm not trying to get a super smooth colour, you can see the lines and the marks there and I'm just working with that. I know when I first started using brush pens and markers like this, I really wanted a smooth flat colour and it just wasn't possible. So leaning into that now and working with it definitely creates a better effect for me and makes me feel better about my art. I'm flipping between my materials, so I'm using coloured pencils, the markers and then these neo colours. The main focus for this one was to capture the night sky, add in the twinkly Christmas lights and the street lights, which you can see I've left space for at the top for the biggest one, and then the yellow neo colour I've added in for the ones further in the distance. This dark indigo is one of my favourite shades, so I'm using that for the windows and adding in some details around the buildings. I'm also really simplifying the Christmas market that was in view here along the bottom. So just a few suggestions of lines for the tents and the little wooden stools. And then again using that for this really tall street light. So I just find this dark indigo as a really good dark colour and it works for so many different things. So I'm putting that in, being quite harsh with my lines so it's really dense and obvious that it's there because I wanted it to go over the blue I've already put down. I'm also using this for the line work for the trees, so I usually prefer to draw really big bushy trees with loads of leaves on, but obviously that wouldn't suit this season and I want to be accurate to the reference, so I'm trying to practice that a bit more and it's been really helpful having these references and really committing to sort of seasonal references and artwork to practice these types of trees. The brown wasn't showing up over the slate, so that's why I've gone back in with the indigo and I'm just adding in the elements that I can see in the reference and simplifying them down. I'm turning them into more simple shapes and trimming down the amount of lines that I use. So I'm using a Derwent Drawing Chinese white pencil here which is my favourite white pencil that I've got and I'm just adding on a bit more shine from that street light. I think this is really effective even though it's not very realistic. I think you can tell that it's emitting light and I really liked how it layered on top of the Posca. I'm also using this around the tree to show some of the light and then I wanted the sky to be a little bit lighter and I love this effect that the sky blue neo colour adds on top. I do come in to neaten it up a little bit later because I really love the way that it looks and I just really like the contrast between the dark blue and also the beige posca with that sky blue in the middle. I'm coming in with my neo colour, you'll see this on all the spreads I create today, I use this as like my snow colour 
and it works really well because I have put that beige Posca down first. So what it means is that it shows up more on the page. The Royal Talons do have ivory based paper so it would show up but I wanted it to be a bit more obvious. So I used the Neo Color in white for that and then the light grey and a little bit of the light coral blue for some shading and sometimes the grey as well. So a mix of all those colours to try and show the shadows because the snow isn't just pure white. I've added in some people and suggestion of people in the distance using the dark indigo pencil again and just trying to create a lot of texture here with my neo colours to show the snow at the bottom. So in the following spread you'll see that I do four different little views. So I took a lot of photos in Prague and I wanted to create some thumbnails using this colour palette and fill the spread that way. So you'll see me go on to those in a minute but I hope you enjoy watching the rest of this one come together and then I'll come back in and talk through the final spread with you all after the music. <laughs> Thank you. 
Christmas is all about. Lights, please. Okay, so now we are onto the final spread. You can see there the very last page I did fill with some swatches of materials. That was done when I was trying to work out what I was taking to my Vienna trip when I did my little solo art adventure there. So that one is filled and so I just had this one last double page spread to fill to complete the entire sketchbook. I was planning on just using near color, but I did want to add on some softer colors. So I did come in with my Tombow brush pens as well. I picked out a few shades if you want to know precisely the colours that I used because I am sort of switching between materials quite a lot. Please do let me know down in the comments and I'll tell you what shades I'm using here. Again I'm using this as like my base layer with the shapes so similar to how I used the Posca acrylic markers but with Tombow brush pens instead. I put down the base shape of the building and some of the colour in the sky and then coming straight in with my luminance pencils again you can see that dark indigo coming in here with the windows and adding in some of the details here from the architecture. This entire spread is a little bit softer than the previous one and it's really fun for me to play with my style like that. I think it does depend on the materials and mediums that I use but being a mixed media artist I kind of enjoy that. I try and embrace the fact that my style can change depending on the mediums. So that's not really a problem for me and it's quite fun for the sketchbook to hold all those experiments. I don't stick to one thing, I do flip about quite a lot, but it's nice to see the evolution in my sketchbook and I think that's why I love seeing a finished sketchbook overall and the joy that it brings because I can see all the different things I've tried, all the different styles and see it all emerge and it's still my art and I really love that feeling. So again I'm adding in little details, the top of the spire, the tiny little people on the path below, and again, I have started using the white near colour for some of the snow, but you'll see later on when I do come in with my coloured pencil that it doesn't necessarily go over it. I did like the effect that I'm about to use here, so I'm putting down some bolder colours, which felt a little bit too bright. So I've put that in for some of the vegetation, and then I'll come in with my white near colour here just to soften it a bit. And that pushes it into the distance and makes it feel like a little bit more accurate to the scene. So I really like that. And I also come in with the light cobalt blue in the sky just to add in a bit more saturation. So the problem with putting down some of the white near colour at the bottom already is that it means when I come in with my pencils it doesn't layer over. So if you are doing it this way I'd recommend doing the near colour and the white last. The pencil struggles over near colour because it is a wax based material even though the near colour twos are water soluble. So it struggles a little bit so I did have to come in with a brown near colour which layers better on top of the white near colour I put down. But that's just something to think about if you are recreating these spreads or if you're using near colours and coloured pencils in your work. I did enjoy being a little bit neater with my pencils to create tiny little blades of like grass and the tiny people. So compared to the other one where I was being a bit harsher with my marks, it was really nice to be a little bit more subtle in this spread. I'm coming in with a mix of the Neo colours and the Tombows here for the trees in the foreground and then you'll see me finish this page with my pencils and my white Neo colour. For the other spread I pick another view also in Prague but from a different area and again I do the exact same technique with my Tombow brush pens, my Neo colours and my coloured pencils. So I hope you enjoy seeing me tackle these winter scenes. 
Again, I'm going to put some music on and I will catch up with you in the extra.
So I'm really pleased with these two spreads that we filled. I think it's really interesting to see the difference between this one and this one. This one feels a lot softer, but I really like the harshness of the colours on here and also the colour palette, which was a little bit more limited to my usual. I'm really proud of this sketchbook. I feel like it's really wonderful to see the progression from the first page to the last. The first half of the sketchbook is already on my channel because these are such chunky sketchbooks that I do it in two halves. So I'll link that up in the cards and also down below in the description box. But stay tuned for part two next week. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it inspiring. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next Sunday with a new YouTube video. See you later.